back to Wines du Jour. We're having a good time here at Kelly's Prime Steak and Seafood. And a couple people came up during the break and asked me a couple questions I'm going to answer on the air because I'm sure there's more than just one or two uh, interested in finding out. First of all, they want to know how heavy alcohol is there in this particular Sauvignon Blanc. And I'm telling you, it's about perfect. It's 13.5. That's a good thing. That's one of the, the things that I wanted to mention. Uh, the fact that it's has a Stelvin closure. And this Sauvignon Blanc happens to be, I think, a pretty refreshing thing. I, that's what I like about Sauvignon Blanc. It actually will cleanse your palate as you're eating food, if you know what I'm saying. It just works that way. I, I love that combination. Now, I, I told you what the chef has put together uh, to go along with it, with the Caesar salad and the, the grilled shrimp and the scallop and so on. I've written down a couple things that I like with Sauvignon Blanc because that's my favorite white wine to go with food. So here are a few things. It goes wonderful with sushi. Now you know a lot of times we talk about going to uh, an Asian restaurant and ordering Guavertstraminer because it's spicy and we figure that the food you're going to have is spicy as well. But all sushi is not spicy, I'm sorry to say. Uh, and so something like this is, is it works out really well. It goes also very well with Thai food. So, and Thai food can be spicy, as you probably know. You go to a typical Thai restaurant and they want to know the heat uh, percentage that you can handle from a number of 1 to 10, 1 being the lightest, 10 being the heaviest. You know, I happen to be a 10 myself, but most people are not. You know, they're around 5 or 4 or 6, some, somewhere around there. Uh, this also goes really well with a, a garden salad as well as a Caesar salad. And a garden salad would have a typical vinaigrette. And I just, the reason I'm mentioning that is a vinaigrette would typically be uh, red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar, one of those two, uh, maybe a little bit of rice wine vinegar, one of those three, along with some extra virgin olive oil uh, and maybe some spices, and that would be your vinaigrette. That's typical. But here, uh, we don't have to worry about that so much. We can take any one of those or even a combination of those. I have never taken red white, uh, wine vinegar and white wine vinegar and put them together, but I have taken red wine vinegar and uh, a little bit of the, uh, the softer uh, type of vinegar and put those two together along with it, maybe a tablespoon of Dijon mustard and then a little bit of salt and pepper and whip it all together and the taste is phenomenal. Especially if you use either white or red wine vinegar uh, with that Dijon mustard, your dressing is gonna be absolutely wonderful. So that's something for uh, you to, to, to uh, consider. Now Chardonnay is, without a doubt, the most popular white wine consumed by <laughs> Americans and everybody else in the world. Uh, it's the most popular white wine period. There isn't anything close to it. Okay, that doesn't mean that all white wines are absolutely outstanding because, you know, that's just like I talked about Pinot Noir a little earlier. Well, they can't all be winners, Les. That's true. They can't all be winners is exactly right. But here we have a 2011 Simi, 100% Chardonnay, coming to us from this, the uh, Sonoma area, and I'm going to ask uh, Hamilton if he'd tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we talked earlier about some regions that are good for Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. And this comes from three different areas, these, this Chardonnay. So they source the grapes from three spots. One of them is the Russian River Valley. And the Russian River Valley is famous for Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. And within that is a sub-appellation, a sub-ABA called Carneros. So also still in Sonoma. Uh, and, and about 60 to 70 percent of the wine comes from this area, right? What you're going to get from that is the good crisp acidity, the, the bright fruit, and then the rest of it comes from Alexander Valley, and Alexander Valley is a lot warmer. And with warmer climates, you start to get more tropical notes, right? So it rounds it out, gives it a more luscious mouthfeel. And with this wine, they harvest the grapes, and then they do the first run juice. So they put them in a big tank and all the natural juice just from the weight of the grapes falls off, and they call that first run. Right. And then they use a pneumatic press and squeeze the rest of the grapes out. Right. So after that, they take it, they age it in oak. This wine is aged in oak for eight months, and what does that do? Well, they do two things in there. One, the yeast cells that produce alcohol, right? Yeast is where we get the alcohol in the wine from. They die while they're in there. 
And this is called lees, right? When you rest a, a wine on the lees, it adds this extra level of mouthfeel, this richness to it. Kind of like a, it's like a spider web of flavor, right? You get vanilla from the oak, you get cream from the, the lees and the malolactic fermentation. And all this comes together to become this really rich, luscious wine. That's, that's a great thing. Now, one of the things I like that they do is that they will take this and age the Chardonnay in French oak for a while, and then they'll move it over to American oak for a while. And let me just mention something about oak barrels, because a lot of people aren't familiar. Uh, there's, you know, you think oak is oak. Well, uh, yes and no. Uh, it's like gasoline is gasoline. There, there's differences, but uh, it's still oak. Uh, the French oak is considered to be the, the most prime and, and most sought after oak barrels in the world. And today's market, you'd have to pay around $1,350 uh, for an oak barrel. That's so, a steal. Yeah, and that's a good price yeah. if you buy enough of them at once. So we're talking thirteen dollars to $1,500 for a barrel. And that's a 55-gallon barrel. That's all it holds, 55 gallons. Yeah, you, you uh, don't get too, much, too many cases out, out of a 55-gallon barrel. Uh, but the beauty of, of the difference in the oaks is how they impart different flavors. Right, so French oak is famous, and, and French oak grows slower than American oak. You know, as people always say that the climate... Elevation-wise, we're talking about. No, no, I mean actually physically the trees grow slower. Uh, and oh, what you said gross. I thought you said gr grows lower. Oh, no, no, grows <laughs> slower. Sorry. Yeah, okay. And the reason, what, what that does is it makes it tighter. So it has less impact on the wine. American oak grows faster, and because it grows faster, you get these big cells, and it... It, it interacts with the wine much more rapidly. So with American oak, we get this vanilla, you know, kind of baking spice. And with French oak, you get much less of that influence. It's a little, uh, a little more cleaner, a little more elegant. Right. And, and the total amount of, of time on oak is around eight minutes. I mean, eight months. Uh, the, the reason I'm bringing this up is that typically the French don't put oak on their Chardonnay at all. Uh, there are some, but very, very little. And years back here in America, when we were learning how to uh, produce wines and, and make things that are drinkable, we thought at one time, back in the 70s in particular, maybe even part of the 80s, the more oak, the better. <laughs> yeah, we call that buttered popcorn in the wine industry. <laughs> That's right, buttered popcorn. That's exactly what it tasted like. And, and the French thought it was the worst thing they'd ever put in their mouth uh, was American uh, highly oaked wines. Well, the Americans, I have to say, grew up as well, and they quit uh, putting as much oak in, the, in their wines, and they've cut it back to where some now, even today, don't put oak in their Chardonnay at all. But most of them do. And it's how much and it's the type of mouthfeel and taste that you're looking for as a winemaker that's going to determine on how long you actually uh, allow it to, uh, to uh, age. And the typical thing is the, the uh, vanilla that comes out of the oak. Vanilla is not part of grape juice in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't make wine or, or anything about that. It actually is something that comes out of the oak barrel. So allowing the juice to be in the barrel for a period of time is going to draw some of, from permeating the wood, draw some of that, that uh, flavor out that we call vanilla. And there's chocolate, there's coffee, there's, there's other things that are secondary to that. But, but vanilla is the typical one. However, here they didn't overdo it. I think it has a great mouthfeel. Uh, and I think the clams and uh, pasta that the chef put together, along with a little wedge of uh, iceberg lettuce with some blue cheese dressing, those together with that Chardonnay go really well. Got to go to a break. We'll be back coast to coast and around the world on the internet right after these messages. <laughs> <laughs> 